Let's, I want to start by knowing a bit your ideas about what is psychotherapy or biodynamic psychotherapy. Therapy. What is biodynamic yeah. psychotherapy? Yes, yes. Yes. I ask myself a lot of the, you know, these sort of questions all the time and very often I feel that the crucial thing is <clears throat> helping somebody to feel at home in themselves. Mm. Mm. That's a very nice metaphor, yes. Um, and not only a metaphor. No, no and it, yeah. yes. And uh, <clears throat> I think from home then somebody can mm. go out and be with somebody else and relate with somebody else. But if they don't have a home to come from and yes. to go to, yes. how can they really yes. be with somebody else? Yes. Mm. It is very interesting, Clova, because it reminds me some 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 participant in a group mm. uh, that was saying in his childhood, mm -hmm. uh, he was born in a hotel because the family were owner of the of this oh, hotel, right. you know. Okay. Yes. Uh, and then he <coughs> used to move uh, from one room to of, of the other, so he never he never had, had a real room of his own. His room, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, and then it, it was difficult for him. Mm. Uh, uh, to find a way of mm. really taking care of himself or finding this place that yes. uh, you were talking about yes. now. Because he moved so much, sure. you know. Yes. And, uh, and then by chance I told him, look, maybe there is one room that never changed in your life. Mm -hmm. yeah? And uh, it took him some time to realize yes. which room was that. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, and I think that relates to what you were talking about, yes. isn't it? I think so, yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Something stable and consistent. Yes. Yes, yes. In, in yourself, in your body, as well, a room. You know? Well, yes, and in yourself. Yeah. I don't really see how you can feel at home in yourself if you don't feel at home in your body. Yes, exactly. Because mm -hmm. there's nowhere else to be at home mm -hmm. except in your body. Yes. Yes. Mm. Can you talk more about that, or, or I mean, well, or even how <laughs> how we can reach that? You know. Well, I th I think we. I mean, th there are many, many, many different approaches which can all contribute to somebody. Yes. Actually, feeling in their body, mm. feeling themselves mm. being in their body. Um, and then actually feeling at home there is a kind of another dimension almost, isn't it? Yes, you know? yes. Um, <clears throat> and so what I find the most difficult thing to communicate to somebody, if it's not already self-evident to them, is how... Well, the, none of the words, unfortunately, in, in English, none of the words work. What do we mean by mind? You know, yes. m mind and body, that's not really a comfortable division or a comfortable way of expressing it. But I'll talk in those terms because um, it's the most current terms. Um, I hope that I produce a book before while I'm still alive. Of um, course. Uh -huh. And I would like to call it soul and flesh. Yes. Because I prefer flesh is something which is constantly rebuilding itself and in constant metabolic process. Mm -hmm. And the body tends to be fossilized before before it's alive, yes. you know, it's not a very living term in some mm. strange way. Mm. Mm. It's become kind of thingified instead of being a, a process. I mean, yes. yes. So, <clears throat> a 
So what would you like, which, I mean, well, it's such a huge field, where, yes. where would you like me to enter it? So we were talking about like uh, the possibilities, you know, uh, to find the place in, in your in, in your in your body. Yes. The other day, for example, you, we were talking about vegetotherapy. Yes. As a as a psychotherapeutic technique. Too. Yes. 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 Uh, and I think that's the technique that most totally for me um, works completely together with with what I'll use for shorthand called the mind and the body mm. um, <clears throat> because and and for me it's clear that the the fact that we talk in terms of energy is very useful for such a discussion because it's obvious that, you know, any material thing is fundamentally energy. We understand that now from physics. Um, so, the substance of my body is energy in this particular form. Yeah. And what could my thoughts and my emotions possibly be except energy? There and so, and we talk about the flow of energy. We in biodynamics talk about the flow of energy and the cycle of energy of an emotional event. This that cycle of energy, and and to me, I feel that you know, with every breath that we're taking, we are in interchange between what is happening in me and what is happening beyond me. Mm. In the universe as a whole. Yeah. So it's a, a very um, precise connection of the individual with the with the the, 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 the whole energy, the cosmic energy, as yeah. Gerda would probably put it. It's a cosmic energy, yes. Yes, yes. 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 Um, but so, I mean, in the bio, in the biodynamic vegetotherapy process, essentially, um, the, the the simplest form of it is simply that somebody lies down and relaxes and yes. is invited yes. by the therapist yes. just to let the breath come. Yes, and and. To see what happens, just to be aware of what happens. And as a therapist, we're there to, uh, to help them recognize that something is happening. Because it starts to happen at such a subtle level that they, most clients can't take it seriously for themselves. Yes until they've experienced several times what a rich process it can be. Mm. But the way that the energy is flowing in, in you, if you're my client at this moment, might mean that your hand starts to move in some way and you're yeah. not even aware of it. You're, you might be thinking of something completely different. Yes, yes. Um, but if, but in fact, this is what's happening. Mm. It's, it's what's going on. Yeah. And if I just help you to be aware that there is a movement and to just let that movement come yes. strongly. Um, so I'm not making any suggestion at all, any new suggestion. It's all starting. It's. I'm recognizing a process which is coming in you and I've no idea where it's going and yes, no idea yes. what it's leading to. Mm -hmm. And and as um <clears throat> I mean typically I was we were talking also about a, a one typical way of a vegetative therapy session might go. And <clears> that <throat> that somebody becomes aware of either 
some trivial, apparently trivial movement impulse, or they might be aware of um, a tension which is growing stronger. Yes. And then we might invite them to see if there's any movement which changes the feeling and what sort of movement this part of your body feels like making and so on. And <clears throat> all this is discovering, kind of bringing up to the surface some impulse in you which you are for any reason um, not spontaneously aware of. You're aware of it with the, with the support and the encouragement of the therapist. Yes. And then <clears throat> um, but essentially these are all movements of energy. Yes. And it seems to me that that the energy we can say the energy is moving in your body, but at the same time there is an impulse in your mind, in your potentially conscious mind, but it's not <clears throat> ringing any bells at all. But it's there, there's a connection. Yes, yes. And we don't know what it is at all. Yes. So, this leads us uh, directly to non-verbal communication, no? Because, uh, as... Uh, as the therapist is trying to contact, you know, that those expressions that are are being expressed by either little movements of the body, either mm. the breathing, either mm. how they look like, etc. Mm. So this is like uh, bringing from uh, a non-verbal state. No, does it make sense to you? I, I say it's non-verbal. Yes, I mean we're not. The client is not exploring it with words. Mm. That's absolutely true. They're exploring yes. it through sensations, yes. through movements, through impulses. Yes, yes that's, that's absolutely true. But I, I was just held up by the word communication. Yes, yes. Because what, what, at this point, yes. at this point, I see myself as the therapist. Um... <coughs> in one sense very present with you, but I feel that you are autonomous. The, the process is happening in you. Mm. And I'm, if I'm encouraging something, I'm kind of magnifying something which is there already. Yes. I'm not changing it. Oh, no, no. No, no. no. But I'm not really... Um, I'm not mm. really uh, communicating. All I'm doing is encouraging you, um, supporting you, because for you it's such a strange experience suddenly to pay attention to mm. a bit of a twitching finger. Yeah. So you wouldn't do that spontaneously. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't pay attention to that. You'd, you'd stop it. Mm. And if you became aware that your finger was doing something funny, you'd stop it. Yes. And do something else. Yes. And you think step. about think about something else. Mm, mm. And I'm helping you to stay with the impulse because from experience I know that it's very possible mm. that this impulse is coming from a could be quite a deeply buried source. Yes. But it's a source which is deep inside you and important for you. And it is energy that hadn't expressed itself fully in mm, the past. Mm, mm, this idea of having interrupted an emotional process mm. is very important. But <clears throat> my point of view is that at this point in the work, it's I'm there really as a magnifier, I mean possibly as a kind of spotter, Mm. You know, I can, oh, there's something happening there and he's not aware of it yet. So I can spot it and I can magnify it and help you to magnify it more mm. mm. till it becomes recognisable. But 
otherwise I'm not actually interacting with it. And so you spoke about non-verbal non communication. To me, at this point, communication isn't the most crucial word. Mm. It's the awareness inside yourself. And some clients have developed so much in awareness inside themselves that they virtually need no very little support from the therapist because they can touch these their, with their awareness they can touch these levels themselves and trust trust them so i <coughs> of course i feel that the communication in therapy is enormously important and the relationship between us is enormously important but at this stage of discovering the, the kind of the hidden springs inside I, I don't think there is that same we're not involved on the same level yes at that point and <clears throat> um, so my feeling is that say this impulse comes first as a physical movement and I encourage you to let the movement get bigger and then it's very often really becomes quite expansive and I yes. invite the rest of your body to come in and that quite naturally stimulates a deeper breathing. Yes. I don't have to ask you to no. do anything with your breath. It just, happens just the movement brings by the by the, yeah. by by this more expansive breath. And then what I have in mind in my mind I have in mind that there is a meaning to this. This impulse connects to something that something that got thwarted somewhere in the past. So I do have this idea, but I don't know what the content of it is at all. But I think we may find it. Mm. If we don't find it in this session, we may find it a bit later on. <coughs> so, as you're breathing more, as we've established the flow of energy through the breath, first through the movement, then through the breathing, and then I would be happy if you let some sound come with the breath, because then you're opening this most expressive, important expressive channel that yes. there is. <laughs> so then you hear yourself making a sound, and if you can accept that, I mean for a newcomer this can be quite a shock, but yes. if you can accept that when you come to the point of accepting this, then I might say, see if any word comes into your mind. Just say what the word is. And, I mean, very often it's a word like no yes. or something, and mm. particularly if it's been that sort of gesture. Mm. And, and so then, if we've now established the, the breathing, which is deeply connected to a depth depth in a person and they're letting the sound come through and they're letting a word come through which has some meaning and and then um, sometimes then you know what more do you want to say yes uh, see if there's more you want to say you know and or I might say see who it is you're saying it to and then we're in a scenario that may be more or less like something that you have lived through but where you didn't fully express yourself mm. and so at this point then obviously your we say the mental faculties are engaged but the energy is coming through in your understanding, in your mind, in your words. And it, but it came 
it impinged in your body in the first place rather than with an idea. Yes. Yeah. So you, would you say that the, the meaning is the last thing to come? Yes, but we haven't fully, <coughs> we haven't absolutely the meaning. I mean, you can do it the other way round, which yes, we can sure, talk about sure, as well. But sure. if we're doing it this way round, then <clears throat> the meaning may still be pretty obscure, but it becomes obvious that mm, this mm. is that this is a moment when you wanted to reach to somebody and you didn't dare, or where you wanted to push somebody away but you didn't succeed, or something hadn't succeeded. Yes. Some, you hadn't succeeded in something or other. Yeah. Um, and and then, if the more fully your energy is allowed through in this expression, that's wonderful in itself. But it's for me, it is not principally about discharging energy, getting rid of anger or whatever it is, getting rid of grief. It's not that. It's about finding you, this element of you that had not managed to express itself before, something you had not managed to express before. And with all my support for your energy in whatever form it wants to come, you can trust yourself to say to the, you know, the vision of your father or mother what you didn't manage to speak up for yourself at the time. And, and that's, then we've really brought something very full back into life. Yes. Yes. And then, then we see where we go with it. And at that point, <clears throat> I mean, I could, as a therapist, I could role play if I thought it was going to be easier for you to look into somebody's eyes instead of imagining it. I could stand there for somebody. Um, or I could simply as your therapist uh, rejoice with you that you finally managed to speak this essential truth out about yourself. Um, so, you know, what role I actually play is very variable according to the session, yes. according to where we're and, going. And uh, would you say so that it is important that the person is integrating this part that well, was it's somehow... Natural. It yeah. is naturally, I mean, if if we're following this this kind of idea of you know first the breath which is sort of the life energy itself mm -hmm. and then the, then the, the voice sound and mm. then the word and then the you know the actual scenario um, I mean that is totally integrated yes. it, the, the, the passage is totally integrated and then how we then um, resolve it and relate it to the what's how the person relates to people in their present life. I mean that can be discussed later and worked through, but it arrives as an integrated experience, equally in the mind and the body. I would say. Yes. That, that that's that's as it were the ideal picture of how it can be, and then often, of course, you don't get that far in any particular session. Um, 